Adjustment layers are a non-destructive editing technique available in all the Affinity products, whether it's photo, designer, or publisher. It's a great function that can allow some pretty powerful effects. So how do they work? Well, let's jump in and find out. What's up guys, it's Trent, and in this video we're gonna talk about how to use the adjustment layers in the Affinity products. Now, as I said, they're available in all of them, but I'm gonna use Affinity Designer for reasons that will be a little bit obvious later on but anything you learn in this video is directly applicable to photo and publisher. Also, I just wanna clarify that there are 23 adjustment layers. I'm not really gonna talk about exactly what each of them do. I'm really gonna give more of an overview of how the concept of adjustment layers works using a few of them like hue and levels. If you do want me to give a detailed video of all 23 adjustment layers, be sure to leave a comment below and if there's enough interest, I'll make a video on it. So as always, instead of explaining something abstractly, let's jump into a demo. So I'm gonna open up a Affinity document I have here. Now this is actually a raster image. It's a JPEG that I put into an Affinity Designer document. I'm going to use a raster example because I think there's just more color variety than you would typically get in a vector example, but I will give a quick vector demo at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. So as I said, this is a JPEG. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an adjustment layer for the levels. So the way I do that is click down here. And what you see is that there's this circle that's kind of half black, half white. If you click on it, we have the list of all the available adjustments we can have. So I'll click levels. And this is the first adjustment we're going to add. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna go into super detail about what each of these does, but I'll just say, at a high level, the levels will bring out the blacks and the whites a lot more in our image. So if I drag up this black, you can see the effect it's having on our image here. So let's kind of just boost it up a little bit. And then for the white, I can do the same thing. I can bring out the whites a little bit more. I'll close it. So what this did is this added an adjustment layer called levels above our image, and I can unlock it here. Now what the adjustment layers do is they affect the layers below them, okay? But you can also actually have the adjustment layers nested inside an element, so like this. Right now, because I only have one image, it's the same thing, but this would be the same as this. But if you had multiple images, you would start to see more of an effect. For example, let me bring in another image of a butterfly. So I brought in this butterfly image, and I don't claim it's the best composition ever, but let's say you wanted to put that butterfly here. Now what I could do is I could add an HSL adjustment, which is a hue, saturation, lightness. So because this butterfly is selected, if I click on our adjustment layers again, I go to HSL. Now I have the option of rotating the color around. So maybe I can make him blue. Again, I wouldn't really do this in real life. I'm kind of trying to show an example here. So I'll make it green. And we can see is that it's a little hard to see maybe, but this HSL is nested under the butterfly image. If I took this adjustment layer and I dragged it out to above, it would affect everything. This kind of shows you the interaction of adjustment layers with the other layers that they're around. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the butterfly and the HSL just for clarity. One other adjustment I like is the vibrance. And let's add that in. So it's vibrance and saturation in one. So vibrance is kind of like a smarter version of saturation. Saturation just kind of, when you increase it, it just kind of raises all the colors equally, whereas vibrance has a little bit more intelligence about the relative values of colors. So let's move the uh, slider here. And you can see it's getting a little more intense there. You can even boost up saturation if you want. And I'll close it. Now, if you ever want to change these things again, you just click on it and you can go back and modify it here. Again, these are all non-destructive, so you can go back and edit them. What I often like to do is select my adjustments and then toggle them on and off to see the effect. So this is our original image, off, and then I'll turn them back on so we can see off, on, off, and back on. So that's a good way to kind of check your work as you're going forward. Okay, so that's a basic idea of how adjustment layers work, but so far there's been one problem, and that's that everything we've done, it's basically affected the whole image. So this leads us to the next topic, which is the really powerful feature of adjustment layers, which is masking. So let's look into that. Now, I know a lot of people are intimidated by masks, but what I'll say is that this is the concept that will have payoffs for all the software tools you use whether it's 3D art, 2D art, video editing. Once you learn masking, you'll find it's almost impossible to delete anything ever because masking is non-destructive. You can go back and forth with how you wanna have things removed or added. You can really modify it a lot. So let's see how we would do that with adjustment layers. So you may have noticed or not noticed that I've been in the designer persona this whole time. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the 
pixel persona. And this is one of the really cool features of Fitting Designer, which is that it allows you to do these kind of raster operations. There's a lot of options here that you kind of see in a typical paint program. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but the, the main one I'll use here will be the paintbrush tool. Now to show an extreme example, let me add an HSL adjustment again. And I'll make it just look like really crazy, like blue or something. And I'll just drag it to the top. Now, what's interesting is that these adjustment layers when you draw on them, they act like masks. So to review what a mask does, when you paint with black, it completely erases the content below it. If you paint with white, it allows the content to go through. And levels of gray are kind of like various levels of opacity in between. So what's gonna happen is this HSL is having an effect. I'm gonna select my brush. Let's make sure I have a hard brush here. And let's go back to my colors. So my, I'm painting with black on this HSL adjustment layer and you can kind of see what's happening. It's erasing the effect of the HSL layer. Let's change the HSL to something a little, like redder. And if I switch to white, it'll actually paint it back in. Now, if you're ever confused about what's happening, you can alt click on your mask over here and it will show you what your mask actually looks like. So I'll paint more black in you can do it here, although it's harder, obviously, because you don't see your image. I'll just I'll click on it again. And this is what it's, what's happening. So if I select the level of gray, you can see it's kind of halfway between the black and the white. So it's kind of partially letting in our hue in there. So I'll look at my mask again. So that's what's happening with the mask. And of course, you can use different brushes. You can use soft brushes if you want. So that soft brush has a little bit of a softer edge. Okay, so let's look at a more practical example of how we could do something like this. Um, I'll add another HSL adjustment layer. And let's say our goal was to change the hair. So let's kind of target the hair. Maybe we want the hair to be that kind of red, okay? So what I like to do here is I would take the fill tool, I would select black, and then I can fill that into my mask. So because I filled my mask with black, it's completely masked out and it's not having any effect. But what you can do now is you can select a brush and let me select like a soft brush and you can start to actually paint that red back in as you see fit. So what I'm doing here, let me go to white, make it more obvious, is I'm adding in the effect of that adjustment again. Now there are many different ways to do this. Adjustment layers is just one, so I'm giving it as an example, but you can kind of see what's happening here. And I would be more precise if like this was a finished piece, of course. This is for demo purposes, but you can kind of see what's happening. And if you want to see what the mask looks like, that's what it's looking like. It always looks funny when you look at it in isolation. And as I said before, if you overpaint something, you can always go back to black and like clean it up. So maybe this part here, I need to like clean up a little bit. So as you go through with something like that, you can toggle on and off to see the effect. So this is before, after before, after. And again, I would clean this up more if this was gonna be a finished product, but this kind of shows you an example of how you can paint something back in. What you could also do is use this, adjust this again to change the color to something different. Now I chose that red because it looks good with the orange, so these other ones aren't gonna look that great, but it kind of shows just the flexibility of the, uh, the process there. We could do a similar technique for the eyes. So let's add another HSL for the eyes. And maybe I want them to be kind of like bluish. And I'll fill it with black. So I filled my adjustment layer with black. I'll zoom in. I'll get my brush. I'll go back to white. And I'll get the eyes back in. So to show you what I've done, that's basically all I've done there. And because these things are editable all the time, I can go and I can tweak it as I see fit. Maybe I'll boost up the saturation. And what we can do is we can select all our adjustments and we can turn them on and off to see the effect they had. So this is before, after, before, after. So as promised, I said I'd look at a quick vector demo. So let's jump into that now. Okay, so I have this layer and these are just vector skulls, kind of colorful. So let's do some HSL adjustment. And it went under them, but I can put it outside if I rotate the color around, you can see that it's having an effect on the vector shapes, just like it did with the raster images. I can change saturation. 
So all these things will affect vectors just like they will with the rasters. And a lot of times I mix even raster images and vector images in one design. So it's a very convenient feature to have these all get affected in the same way. So those are adjustment layers. I use them all the time, particularly levels, vibrance, hue. There are a ton of them. If you want me to give an in-depth tutorial on all 23 of the adjustment layers, put a comment below and I'll make a video if there's enough interest in it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.